Gundam Wing Review, Episodes 24 through 28. Romafeller Foundation guy Tuberoff wants to kill off the two Gundam pilots that they still have captured, but Un believes that there's still some value in keeping them alive. Then a brand new Gundam attacks and destroys a whole bunch of colonies. Un dispatches Troa, who takes Hero along and their two new badass Oz mobile suits. Troa and Hero, of course, plan on teaming up with this new Gundam pilot, who is probably Catra, and taking out Oz. But they weren't ready for Catra to be crazy! He's already destroyed a couple of colonies, and he's about to destroy another one when Hero and Troa show up. Un has already left the lunar base, and Tuberoff decides to have a mutiny, which starts with cutting off the air supply to Duo Nufei's cell, as well as the five scientists' cell. Hopefully the battle against Catra will go smoothly, but nope, because he's crazy. He seems quite unsure of who his enemies are and ends up destroying half of Troa's suit. Then he fights against Hero and he's about to shoot the cannon at him to kill him when Troa jumps in front. He makes a dramatic speech which is poignant enough to get Catra back to his senses, but then he explodes. And during all of this, Trey's goes to Duke Dermail, the head of the Romafeller Foundation, and says that he no longer wants to be associated with them because of where they're going with the mobile dolls. So Trey's is imprisoned and Un makes her way back to the lunar base. She rescues the scientists Duo and Wufei and sets them all free. But then Tuberoff shoots her, and I guess we feel bad for her. Wufei and Duo get into their nearly complete Gundams and escape, but Hiro and Katra have now been captured. But that's okay, because Oz has split into two factions. A group that supports the Romafeller guys, and a group called the Trey's faction, which is loyal to Trey's. And so Katra and Hiro are currently being held by the Trey's faction. Oz wants to test out the system that's installed in the new Gundam, which gives pilots better reaction times so they can keep up with the mobile dolls. But it also makes them crazy, which is what happened to Catra. So Romafeller Oz surrounds Trey's faction Oz and forces them to hand over Catra and Hero. They hook Hero up to the system and he's doing great until he goes crazy, and then he starts searching for the five scientists to kill them. So now, if you believe it, Catra is the one talking him down and convincing him that this is not the right way to do this. He determines that after successfully getting everyone into space, space doesn't need them anymore and they have to go back to Earth. So he gets Hero into a shuttle and departs. And those pesky five scientists find that Gundam and they think, yeah, let's fix it up. All in all, that was just three episodes, guys. I didn't watch episodes 27 and 28 because they're just clip shows. I was thoroughly confused by huge plot points, and once again they've changed everything up on us. I feel like I'm turning into a foolish colony who's being won over by Lady Un's seemingly sudden turnaround. And Oz itself, the one thing that we always knew for sure was the enemy, is suddenly not, but only sort of. Dick move, Gundam Wing! Dick move. Let's begin with our pilots, and I'm happy to say this time around that every one of them contributed to the plot at least a little bit. Let's go backwards and start with Buffet just for kicks. Mostly because he's the easiest one, because unfortunately he did the least. Again. His conversations with Duo were hilarious, because he has zero respect for him. At first, I thought Wufei only disrespected women, but in actuality, he disrespects everyone. This became quite apparent when they were in the prison, and Wufei was treating Duo like he owed him something. But now he's got a new Gundam, alright! So, its name is Shenlong, like its previous one, but is it also nicknamed Nataku? I'm just getting exhausted waiting for Wufei to get some shining moments. But maybe I'm just biased because I really want him to do more. Speaking of shining moments, Duo finally got to carry an episode all on his own. I know I said I was going to talk about them in backwards order, but honestly I just wanted to talk about Wufei first. Anyway, I don't know why it surprised me when Duo found himself an unwavering woman to stand beside him, just like every other male character on this show. Somehow, I don't think that's the last we're gonna see of Hildy. Though she has one of the most easily swayed hearts I think I've ever seen. She was all gung-ho about Oz, but it seriously only took a couple of sentences from Duo for her to change her mind. And not just kind of change her mind, but make her eagerly change everything about her life and flip it upside down in a couple of seconds. Sure, Hildy, you go, girl, I guess. However, I was a bit disappointed that Duo's first action as a solo character 
is to voluntarily allow himself to get captured, but I get it. I totally get it. So we went from five Wu Fei to two Duo, so the only logical place we can go from here is to number four, Catra. I have to admit, I was a little disappointed with how the show dealt with this. Because a couple of episodes ago, he was laughing diabolically and being totally crazy. But then they were saying that he was only being crazy because of the Zero system in that Gundam. So what was the point of him being crazy before he got into the Zero system? He also regained his sanity startlingly quickly, and oddly came out of this experience being even more precious though I didn't think that was possible. His eyes were so sparkly, and he was able to use his pure-heartedness in order to get Hiro's sanity back too. Did you see the part where Hiro was glowing from the Zero system and Catra touched it and nullified it with his heart? <laughs> so are we past everything that happened regarding his family and their deaths? I'm a little unclear with what happened with the Catra story arc, and I don't know how he got his hands on slash built this new Gundam with the Zero system. And now he's headed back to Earth with optimism and a new outlook on life. But he murdered Troa! No, he didn't. Don't be silly. We saw Troa floating through space at the end, so clearly he's going to be rescued and come back at a later point in the series. But I kind of got a kick out of the way Troa chose to approach Catra when they first discovered it was him destroying the colonies. He was all like, come on, hero, it's just Catra. Um, Troa, you did notice that he's blowing up colonies, right? Yeah, but it's just Catra. He's clearly a bit unstable right now. He's harmless. He wears pink. Uh, blowing up colonies. He plays the violin! But all that aside, I was impressed with Troa's ability to plan ahead and decide he was going to remain within Oz to kill Trace, even though that fell apart. He could have potentially pulled that off at the rate he was moving up to the chain of command. But that whole pesky friendship with Catra thing had to get in the way. And what's on the horizon for Troa and his currently missing Gundam? I can't exactly say, but he has put himself into a position where it would be easy for a lot of people to potentially recognize him. Lastly, we have Hero. During his fight against Catra, I was legitimately wondering who the superior fighter was. After all, it's been fairly well established that Hero has been the most successfully trained, but Catra had a better Gundam and craziness on his side. There's only so much one can do against those odds, regardless of how good you are. But then there's this Zero system, which seemed to mess with Hero's nearly perfect programming. It has the ability to enhance a pilot's reaction time at the risk of their sanity. It blurs the lines between allies and enemies, making it difficult to figure out who's on which side. I thought it was interesting the way Hero came to realize that it was the five scientists who were threatening his life the most. In a way, there is some truth to that. If it wasn't for the five scientists and their Gundams, then Hero probably wouldn't be in that mess, or anywhere near it for that matter. In this way, they do threaten Hero's life, or at the very least, his happiness. Enough of those kids, we have to talk about the insanity going on in Oz. There's now two different versions of Oz, based on who the soldiers want to follow. The Romafeller Oz, which focuses on mass productions and mobile dolls. Then there's the Trace faction, which values quality over quantity and the pilot's instincts. I thought it was very weird to pull Trace and Un out of the position of the big bad. Because now, with Un rescuing the pilots and getting shot, and Trace distancing himself from the Romafeller guys, they're sort of sympathetic. These are the same guys who orchestrated the mass murder against the Alliance pacifists, remember? They're also the guys who murdered Mr. Darlian, threatened to destroy colonies, and essentially took over the entire world. What's going on? I'm supposed to feel bad for them now? Ungetting shot should have been a reason to make us all happy, I thought. But I guess since it was coming from Tuberoff and his melted face, we didn't like it. There was a distinct group of people who weren't in these episodes at all, and it was pretty noticeable. To be fair, taking away the two clip shows, we're only talking about three episodes, but still. Relina has been gone for a super long time, and as happy as that makes me, I feel like that when she does come back with the peace graphs, she's gonna come back with a vengeance. Similarly, Miliardo and Noin will come back with her. 
The last thing we need is yet another faction at work here, but it's inevitable, so okay. In light of everything that's been happening recently with all the groups fighting amongst themselves, I imagine the angle that they're gonna come in with. I remember back when I first started watching this series, everyone warned me that it would get very preachy. And knowing Relina and knowing what the Peacecrafts stand for, I think I know where that preachiness is gonna come from. It's silly and idealistic to say that we should just forget all that happened and let bygones be bygones and just accept peace everywhere. But somehow I think that's what the Peacecrafts are going to aim for once they come back from their little sabbatical. Lastly, I'll say a little bit about the five scientists. I'm pretty sure we haven't learned their motives yet. I confess myself confused. If they're just a group of guys who want to create their own chaos, then fine do that. But if they're really fighting for the peace of the colonies, but didn't talk to the colonies first before they did this, then that's why we're having problems. This total absence of communication thing is what's making it so difficult for all the groups to carry out their actions. Anyway, that's all for these episodes. As I said before, I didn't watch episodes 27 and 28, so I hope nothing important happened during the clip shows. Next up, I'll do a first half series retrospective of episodes 1 through 28. Then we'll kick off the second half of the series with an I'm watching of episode 29. See you next time for that. Bye! He makes a dramatic <laughs> And not just kind of change her mind, but to make her eager, eager, bleh.